Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. I'm going to teach you how to crochet this wreath. The awesome thing about this wreath is that you can use any type of yarn, different gauges, doesn't matter. You're just gonna crochet a bunch of different leaves and attach it to this wire frame. I will teach you how to do all of that in this tutorial. I have a free written pattern for this wreath. Thank you to today's sponsor, Universe. Universe is a website building app that allows anyone to build a website from their iPhone, iPad, or from their web browser. You can get a custom.com domain and customize your website any way you'd like. I used Universe to create a website for this crochet wreath pattern. Making this website was not only super fast, but also super easy. The platform is very easy to learn, and there were so many customizable options to choose from. I take all of my photos with my phone, so it was super easy to upload those photos directly to the website. I created a series of pages so it was easy to navigate through the pattern. There are so many options with Universe. You can sell products, patterns, create a portfolio, and much more. You can create a website for free, but if you're interested in taking full advantage of all the features, you can upgrade to Universe Pro. If you want to get Universe Pro, there's a special offer for my followers. If you use this link, you can get 25% off your first year. That includes a custom domain, lower transaction fees, quicker payouts, custom menu styling, Google Analytic integration, custom email and domain, and much more. Everything will be linked in the description down below, and don't forget to check out the free pattern. Also, this is a tutorial on how to crochet something. This is not a crochet tutorial, so if you don't know how to do basic stitches, like single crochet, half double, double crochet, please learn how to do those and then come back. I'm not going to teach you how to do those. I just thought I'd let you know. Go check out the free pattern I made using Universe. It's really cool and pretty, and I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. All right, so I thought I would quickly talk about like materials and yarn. Obviously, you need your crochet hook, sewing needles, thread. I'm not going to include that right now. These are the yarns that I picked up at the craft store near me. I only have one craft store in my city, so not a lot for options, but this is kind of what I gathered. Um, I haven't worked with any of these acrylics before, so I don't know how good they are. We will have to see. These are the same type of acrylic. I just chose two different types of like this green, like this natural colored green. I found it was very hard to find like natural colored greens. There is a lot of like neons. Anyways, picked up a bunch of different types ranging in texture. I'll link all of them in the written pattern. So if you would like to use the same ones, you're obviously welcome to, but I say just pick up a bunch of different textures in different tones of green. And I think matching them all up, like merging them together will be really beautiful. So here are the last two of the greens. Like all of them are very different from each other, which is nice. And then I also picked up a bright red so I could make like the little berries. I've never worked with any of these yarns, so I can't tell you how good or bad they are, but that's just what I'm using. I think you should just go for like texture, different textures and different colors, or this is a great project that you can use your scraps for. You don't even have to make it green. You can make it rainbow. Go for whatever you'd like. The other thing you definitely need is a wire structure to build this around. You could just cut a giant piece out of like cardboard if you'd like if you want to be eco-friendly that is a such an easy option and a free option this is just like one of those wire wreath frames that i picked up from a craft store and you can probably get them online i'm pretty sure the dollar store sells them i should have checked before purchasing this one because it's probably way cheaper but i think this just costed me like six bucks maybe eight bucks i don't know but you know pretty sturdy it's gonna last me a lifetime i'm gonna keep this wreath for every christmas until i die all right, so we're going to do the long strip that wraps around um, the wreath frame. And to do that, I have two balls of yarn and I'm using Loops and Thread Impeccable Acrylic and I'll link the color numbers in the written pattern, but this is like a medium four weight and it says to use a five millimeter crochet hook. I like my stitches to be a bit denser. So what I like to do is double up my yarn and I'll be using a six millimeter crochet hook. You do not need to use this specific yarn or crochet hook. You can use whatever you'd like laying around at home or whatever you have available. Um, I'll leave the measurements of the piece I'm creating so you can just make it to that size or honestly, this is very freestyled. So make it to whatever size you think fits your piece. So I'm gonna start with a slip knot. I'm gonna put that on my hook. I'm going to chain nine, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know if you can hear my cat. Anyways, I'm going to skip three chains on the hook and I'm going to start crocheting in that fourth chain from my hook and I'm going to double crochet six. So one, six. And there is our first row. 
For our second row, we're going to chain three. That chain three is going to act as our first double crochet. So I got a hair in there. That's gonna act as our first double crochet. So instead of putting our next double crochet in here, we're going to skip that because that's technically our first double crochet. Then I'm going to double crochet six. So one, and that sixth one is going to go in that chain three we did in the last row. And six, and there we go, we have two rows. And this piece, ignore my literal measuring tape, this piece is about three inches wide, so if you don't have the same yarn hook size or whatever, you, you can use whatever yarn you'd like, I'm just letting you know mine is three inches. And I'm going to continue this until I can wrap it completely around my metal wreath. Excuse my pajamas, but it's nighttime and I want to be cozy. All right, so this is my metal wreath that I have. I'm going to measure it. So you, ha so just for reference, so mine is 18 inches um, in diameter, and I also have my long piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap it around like this, and then sew the end together. I'm going to measure it just so you guys have a reference, but I would say make it really long and then wrap it around and just, if it's good, it's good. So mine is 98 inches long. I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to start wrapping it around here. Perfect. So this is what it looks like all wrapped up and as you see I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to sew the two ends together. It's not totally perfect but that really doesn't matter because we're going to be covering this in greens um, which is going to be perfect. This is just the base where we can work off of. So I've made a bunch of different leaves and I'm going to show you how to make all of them. I have like this fern is what I'm calling it. I'm honestly not very well educated on different types of leaves. So <laughs> we have the fern and then I call this big leaf. Then I call this little leaf because it's little. And then this one I've been calling like a holly leaf um, or oak tree leaf, I guess is what it reminds me of. So the first one we're going to start with is the big leaf and you can do it with any yarn I'm just using this because it's easy to see on camera and um, I am also using a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook but I'll leave all the yarn details in the description but honestly use any type of yarn I'm using multiple colors and multiple types of textures and stuff because I kind of want it to be very textural and have like different colors and stuff which I think would be cool it would also be oh it would be so beautiful if you did it in fall colors anyways I'm going to start with a slip knot. I'm going to put my hook there and then I'm going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Once I have six, I'm going to skip the first chain on the hook. I'm going to single crochet into the second chain away from my hook. I'm going to half double crochet in the next chain after that. Then I'm going to double crochet to the next one after that. Then I'm going to triple crochet into the next one. So at this point we have chain six, skip one chain, then I single crochet into the next one, half double crochet, double crochet, triple crochet. Then I'm going to put eight triple crochets into the very last chain right there. Once I've done eight, you can kind of pull that closed if you need to, but I honestly don't really care if there's a hole because you're not going to really see it. As you can see, triple crocheting eight has brought us all the way around here, and then we're going to crochet along that chain. So I'm going to put one triple crochet into that next stitch or that next 
chain. I am going to double crochet into the next one. I'm going to half double crochet into the next one. Then I'm going to single crochet in the next one. Now, before I'm finished, this is what it looks like. I'm not gonna slip stitch into the first one. Instead, I'm going to chain three. And then I'm going to put a single crochet into that stitch here. So that is one, two, three chains away from the hook. And then I am going to slip stitch in the top of that single crochet that we first did. And that is our leaf. To tie it off, I usually insert my hook, snip it, and then I pull it through, tighten it as much as I can, and then I pull it to the back so I can weave in my end. As you can see, it's kind of wonky and rolling up, but that is okay. Once we flatten it out, you can also steam these if you'd like, but once we kind of flatten it out, it takes shape. That is how you do the big leaf. To make a different variation of the little leaf, you're going to start with a slip knot and then you're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then you're going to skip the next chain on your hook and go into the second one. You are going to slip stitch into that one. Then you're going to single crochet into the next two chains. One, two, then you're going to half double crochet into the next chain, and then you're going to half double crochet five into the very last one. After that, I'm going to half double crochet back into the chain, then I'm going to single crochet into the next two. Then, oh, I had a little in there, I'm going to slip stitch somewhere up here. Usually I just like going into the first stitch we made. Whatever you think looks good. Like that looks good to me. And that is how you do the other little leaf. The next one is this like oak leaf, this oak holly leaf, whatever you want to call it. It's quite cute. I really like it. It would be really interesting to make a whole wreath just out of these ones made in different colors. Anyways. We're going to start with a slip knot and we're going to chain eight. One, two, three. Chained eight. I'm going to skip the first chain on our hook and I'm going to start crocheting in the next one. So I'm going to do one single crochet and then I'm going to half double crochet into the next five chains. So. And then in the very last stitch, we're going to single crochet, or the very last chain is what I mean. Then we're going to work on this side, but first we're going to chain one, and then we're going to start crocheting in this other side of the chain. So we're going to start off with a single crochet, and then I'm going to half double crochet five all along here. There we go. Then we're going to single crochet into that last chain. And then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to slip stitch in the first stitch we made, which is this one. After we do a slip stitch. So we've completed our first row, which is here. And you can make a bunch of leaves that are just like this. That would be cute. Um, but instead we're going to do these little clusters and to do a cluster, we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, chain three, and then slip stitch into this stitch here, so the third chain from the hook. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch. And that is one cluster, so we'll do that again. We're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, chain three, one, two, three. Then we're going to slip stitch in the third chain from the hook. 
and then we're going to slip stitch in the next stitch or yeah stitch there we go Sting stitch a lot that's us, our second cluster so we're going to keep doing that around the whole thing so let's do that again slip stitch into the next stitch chain three slip stitch into the third chain from the hook and then slip stitch into the next stitch and now we have three clusters we're going to repeat that around the whole thing I'm about to finish the last slip stitch in this cluster and as you can see and I am all finished looks good I just slip stitched it into the first stitch of that row this might be my favorite one it's just too cute it's too cute the next one we're going to do is the mini holly slash oak leaf and this is it for comparison this is the regular one we just did and then this is the mini one I thought adding some mini ones would be cute I don't actually know if like it produces leaves that only have this amount of points I just think it's cute so we're going to make it <laughs> so start with a slip knot and we're going to chain six one two three four five six then we're going to skip that first chain on our hook and start crocheting into that second chain we're going to chain or not chain oh my gosh we're going to single crochet five one five all the right we've gone all the way down and now we're going to start working on the other side first we're going to chain one so we can kind of like around that corner and then we're going to single crochet five all the way back down the other side five and there we go we're going to chain one and then we're going to slip stitch into the very first single crochet we did and there's our first row could also stop here if you want a really small leaf I guess but we're going to make our clusters again and to make a cluster we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch chain three then slip stitch into the third chain from the hook which is this one so and then finish it off by slip stitching it into the next stitch so let's do another cluster we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch chain three then we're going to slip stitch into the third chain from the hook then we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch to finish that cluster then I'm just going to repeat it all around this oval so my last thing I need to do is put that slip stitch finish off this cluster by putting that slip stitch into the first stitch we did in that row and then I'm just going to snip my end and there we go this is our small leaf it is so cute the last one I'm going to show you is this fern and you can essentially sorry there's cat hairs on it because I decided to make these downstairs where the cats are <laughs> anyways um, so you can make as many as you would like and you can make them as long as you would like or as short as you would like so I'm going to start with a slip knot put my hook on and then to make one little like fern arm I'm going to chain five one two three four five and then I'm going to skip the first chain from the hook and go into the second one and I'm going to slip stitch three one two three just like that and I'm just going to repeat that until I have the desired length so one two three four five then skipping the first one going into the second one I'm going to slip stitch three so one oops two three all right there's our second one so I'm going to keep repeating that one two three four five chains skip the first one go into the second one and slip stitch three one two three then I'm going to repeat that for as many times as I want so I'm going to move this out of the way this is how long I've made mine and we're going to start doing that on the way back and this one is going to end up as the one that goes on the very end so I'm going to chain five one two three 
for five. going into the second chain from the hook I'm going to slip stitch three one whoop, two three and this is the fun part <laughs> I'm going to slip stitch into the chain that's between the two pieces so I'm gonna put it here and then I'm going to slip stitch just like that I'm gonna do that again chain five and then in the second chain from the hook I'm going to s slip stitch three one two three now I'm going to slip stitch into the chain that is between these two look at that and that starts to create our, our like fern shape then you're just going to continue that exact same pattern all the way down I'll do that one more time chain five And then I'm going to go in the second one, slip stitch three. Then I'm going to slip stitch into the chain between those two little fern arms. I'm going to repeat this until the very end. So I'm back down at the very end. My last thing is I'm going to slip stitch into that very last chain. And I am all done my fern. Fern, I guess that's what it's called. Look how beautiful it is. So if you'd like to make little berries, this is how you make them. They're really easy. I like to leave a really long tail so I'm able to like insert it, tie it, and then hide the tail. But whatever way is good for you. And I know like they don't really look like it, but trust the process, it will look like it. So I have some of this red yarn, which I really like it's nice and fluffy and I leave about like of this long of a tail then I start with a slip knot I have my hook insert my hook into my slip knot and then I'm going to chain three then I'm going to single crochet into this stitch which is the third from the hook and you're done <laughs> and I know like I find like it you kind of smush it a bit and it looks perfect to me. I'm gonna snip my tail kind of long. Fasten it off. And that is how you make a little berry. You know, it looks looks good to me when you have a little cluster that'll look nice. Alright, it is now time to make the big red bow. And you can totally skip this step, but I thought a bow would be fun. So I'm going to start with just a slip knot inserting my hook and then I'm going to foundation single crochet 25 or you could chain 26 and then single crochet back in those 25. Either way you get there. I just prefer to do a foundation single crochet. So to do that I'm going to chain two, insert my hook into that first chain, then I'm going to yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over, pull through both loops. That gives us the first foundation single crochet, and we're going to insert our hook into the top of that first stitch we just made, which is right here. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over, pull through two. And then that's our second one, so we're going to do that again, insert into the last stitch we created, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. And then I'm going to repeat this 25 more times until I have a foundation single crochet row of 25. All right, I've done 25. By the way, we're doing like the tail of the bow first. Um, all right, so once we have 25 for row two, I am going to chain one and then I'm going to increase in the first stitch by putting two single crochets in the first stitch. And then I'm going to single crochet 23 all the way across and then put in another increase in the very last stitch. So increase, single crochet the whole length, then increase. 
For the third row, we're essentially going to repeat the same thing, and that is chain one, increase in the first stitch, single crochet 25 to the very end, and then increase in the last stitch. This is what it looks like so far. Now for row four, again, we're kind of repeating the same thing. We're going to chain one, and then we're going to increase in the first stitch, single crochet 27, and then increase in the last stitch. All right, so we're all done with the tail, and we have this like little tapered kind of moment. I'm gonna snip my end, and I'm gonna weave in my ends, then we'll get started on the body. For the body, we're gonna start with a slip knot, insert our hook, and then we're going to do a foundation single crochet for 30 stitches. If you don't wanna do that, just chain 31, and then single crochet 30 stitches. All right, so we have a foundation single crochet row of 30 stitches, and this is gonna be our row one. So from row two to four, so the next three rows, we're going to chain one and then single crochet 30. And I'm not gonna show that on camera because it's like the same thing over and over again. But from row two to four, we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna have four rows in total. So I'm at the very end of my fourth row. I'm just going to snip my yarn and then I'm going to weave in my ends and I'll have this piece and then this piece and we can assemble our bow and make the middle thing. So for the last middle piece or for the last piece, which is the middle piece, we're going to obviously slip knot around the hook and then we're going to foundation single crochet 10 or chain 11 and single crochet 10. Once we have 10, we're going to chain one and single crochet back into those 10 stitches. And then we're gonna repeat that for also the third row. So for the next two rows, we're gonna do that. We'll have three rows in total. All right, so it's time to assemble everything. I'm going to start with the body piece, which is this one up here. I'm going to connect the ends together and I'm just going to roughly sew So I'm going to find the center, I'm going to fold the top like this, and I'm going to sew it together. And I'm going to sew right through the center and bring my needle to the other side. I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing to the back. Alright, that's what our bow is looking like so far. For the bottom, I'm going to fold it together like this, then I'm going to sew it, and these are going to go together like this. So we're going to grab our centerpiece, it's going to go right here, so I'm going to put it around, flip it over like so, and I'm just going to stitch this closed. And when I flip it over, that is my bow. So I am back on my bed with the wreath. I'm doing it on my bed because this is the biggest like flat surface I can get the camera up high enough for, so we'll have to make do. But these are all, these are all the different leaves I've made. Yeah, I'm just going to start piecing it together, pinning everything, and deciding where it all goes. To evenly spread the leaves out, I just laid the wreath on my bed and then I separated the leaves so I could kind of like generalize, get an idea of where they should go, and then I also did that for the holly leaves, and all I did was literally just start pinning it to the wreath, and really no method to this other than just pinning it to where I think it looks good. I liked some of the leaves to kind of like overhang over the edges so it looked more organic, and yeah, I just continued that around the whole wreath. Nothing super complicated. I also just made sure that there were no like empty spaces where you could see the underneath layer too much. I didn't want to leave like a lot of holes. I made sure they overlapped quite a bit and I tried to make sure that the colors were like diverse enough where you wouldn't have like a bunch of light green chunks in an area. So just like keep in mind where you're putting your colors in shapes and just kind of spread it out as best as you can. 
as you can see, everything is so beautifully pinned down and I haven't attached like our little fern bits. And the reason is because I want to attach them later and kind of, you know, add them later. Same with the holly. I haven't added that. I just have a ton of pins and yes, it's going to be a pain to get out. Next thing I have are some upholstery needles. I didn't pay $11 for them. These are like 60% off. Thank goodness. But the reason, or they're called decorator's needles, and a long needle is very helpful because I'm going to be sewing straight through, um, which is going to be really helpful for this project. So essentially, I kind of pinned everything down, and now I'm just going to sew everything together to the wreath. Okay, so sewing the leaves down, obviously I started from the back, and I just sewed up and down through like the whole wreath. And obviously I'm stuck on a section right here because I didn't film the whole thing, but I didn't want to sew down like the corners of the leaves. I wanted them to still stay up and be organic. So I was really just sewing down like five or six points per leaf so they'd stay in the same spot. At this point, I've pretty much attached everything using sewing a needle and thread and the back, it looks like there's a lot of like pieces that I need to, you know, it's the back. It doesn't matter. So this is what the front looks like so far. As you can tell, I only really use the needle to come up and down and to keep the leaves in place. I don't want to sew like all the edges directly on because I like how they're lifted up in some areas and that just like makes it a lot more leafy foliage kind of. So the reason why I didn't put the ferns on was because I want to do the ferns separately. Just because they have so many extra pieces, I think it would be nice to piece it in after. So I'm just going to place, I think, each fern where I think it should go. Okay, I think I have each fern in the spots I want them. Don't worry too much about these ends being lifted up. I have my needle and thread with my comically large knot at the end. I'm basically only going to sew through the center of the fern just to keep it down. I'm not going to sew down all like the individual little leafy things. I've put all of the leaves on looks amazing and now it's time to attach the berries and you know I mentioned earlier to leave the tails long because that is important now I'm gonna attach them like in little clusters get my crochet hook and then I'm gonna shove it through the back pull one of the things one of the threads down and then I'm going to go up kind of near it and pull this other yarn down that's what it looks like and we're gonna flip it over and we're going to tie the two threads together a couple times double knot it or triple knot it and that's how it secures the berry so as you can see it's nice and secure now and instead of cutting the yarn I'm just going to weave the yarn into the center of the wreath you don't see it at all because there's so many layers of leaves and that is how it looks like it's perfect and I'm just gonna repeat that with another one like right next to it all right so this is the wreath after I've oops, there's a thread after I've attached all of the berries and look how beautiful it is I'm still gonna steam it um, I think just to you know flatten things out and make them feel complete but now it is time to attach the bow. Here is my strange little bow. <laughs> so I'm just gonna sew it right to the wreath. All right, the bow is all secure, but it's a little, um, it's curling up on itself, but that's okay. We'll fix that with the steamer. Honestly, this isn't the most pleasant angle, but I am here with an ironing board and I have my piece here and I also have a steamer. So I have a steamer here and I'm just going to literally just steam my pieces and I'm trying to flatten out my ferns as I do it. I don't want to mush them too bad. I'm just kind of flattening them. And what I want to do with the bow is I just want it to lay kind of flat. So I put the wreath on the wall. I am so happy with how it turned out. It is just, oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. And I can't wait to take this out every year and hang it up for the holidays until I die. I'm going to use this every single year because it's so pretty. 
Uh, I'm so happy when something turns out so gorgeous, and I'm so excited to teach this to you guys because you can adapt it to any way you like. You can make a small one, you can make a giant one, you can make it any colors. I want to make one in fall colors, that's definitely going to be my next project. Here is some of the gorgeous close-up details. The bow just ties everything together. Wow. Just looks so good. You're all finished! Yay! You made it to the end of the video! I hope everyone has a safe, happy holiday season. Thank you for sticking around if you made this. Email it to me, tag me, I'd love to see it. I'd like to thank today's sponsor of this video, Universe. Thanks to them, I was able to make this video and a free pattern using their website builder and give it to you guys. So, so that is quite awesome. I'm so happy with the cute little website I made and I'm so happy with this wreath. Oop. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!